today on Sheer Lux's podcast, we are partnering up with Space NK and we are interviewing the amazing <laughs> Jamie Genevieve, who is the founder of Vive. And for me, this is a pleasure because we've been friends a long time, Jay. I feel very comfortable talking I'm, to you, Lisa. <laughs> I'm like, almost like, right, let me stick to my questions because who knows what we're <laughs> going to actually be saying. Okay, so this is a podcast all about success stories and yours really is quite remarkable and also still kind of at the beginning in some respect. But I want to go back to the actual beginning because you started on a makeup counter in Glasgow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah, how old were you? What was the makeup counter? So I was um, 18 years old and I got my first job uh, in Debenhams and it was Estee Lauder. And I worked there for two years and my I love coming from counter. And I, I've said before that yeah. I, I think maybe a part of me was maybe a little bit embarrassed at one point because I was like, oh, well, you know, I've not done A-list and I've not done celebrity makeup and do I need to do that to be successful? But after, you know, building the brand, we've had V for, for nearly three and a half years now. Um, it's all the things that I learned and, and all the conversations that I had and all the customers that I met and all these kind of relationships that I forged at the very start that are that are so key yeah. to the the why and the how and the and and what Vive is. So yeah, I started at Estee Lauder for two years and then you know, that's a super classic legacy brand. I loved my brand training when I was there. I remember I went to Dublin for five days to get taught all the kind of like tips and tricks of being a makeup artist on a makeup counter and it was it was so important for yeah. an 18 year old that wanted to be in the industry it was it was really it was really great then I moved over to Alamaska and worked there for two years which is much more artistry focused um the the formulations were unbelievable the art the skill that you needed to work on an Alamaska counter as well and that you learn but like you say the formulations of the products they were doing things before anyone else it's true it's true and um Wanting to work there terrified me because I knew that I had to be of a st of of a level. Mm. I think, um, and this was back. You know, I was still at college. I was still learning. And I think the amazing thing about being a makeup artist um, is you're always learning. You'll say the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, you're always learning from from other artists, but from I've learned from my customers all the time. Yeah. They tell me how they use my products, and a lot of the time it's stuff I've never even tried before. So it's um, when you're when you're open to that. Um, to the fact that you're you're never going to be you know a hundred percent complete at being a makeup artist, you're you're constantly learning. Then I I think it makes the industry so much more exciting. Definitely a hundred percent. And did you always know you wanted to be a makeup artist? When did you kind of come a, to that decision? So I was at college doing art. Art yeah. art was always my thing that I was good at that I really loved. And there's a book called Ikigai. Have you heard of this? No, book? I haven't. It's so great. It's so nice. And it's um it's a book by two people. One of them's Japanese and Ikigai is a Japanese phrase where it means when you find your state of flow so it's when everything calms down around you people find it when they're gardening people basically it's whatever your kind of like soul passion is and I feel like I got in my flow when I was doing makeup so when I, when I was at college I ended up doing the makeup for people's um, like units, like they were doing fashion or photography, mm -hmm. whatever whatever their project was, they often needed a makeup artist. Um, and I remember saying, "Well, I can I can try." And someone said to me, they were like, "Oh my god, you're really good at that." And that I don't know whether it's maybe like a slight lack of self confidence in a in a in a teenage girl, but someone saying that to me made me feel so great. Yeah. And I remember someone saying something so similar to me. My first, um, my first proper legal job, lol. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been working since I was 14, but my first legal job yeah. was um, at Comet Electricals and I would sit on the till so people would come over and I would like put through the hoovers and stuff like that. But I remember because I felt so grown up because I had my job, I was still at school, but I would go and work, at, work in my little job. Um, so I felt like I wanted to do my makeup to go to work. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember getting such a buzz saying to my parents, I'd be like, I'm off to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 I loved it but I remember people would say to me when they were queuing up to pay they would say your makeup's lovely and that was just be me practicing on myself so that's almost like one stage of it people can get good at their own makeup but when you're working on someone else that feels like another thing yeah definitely and I think that you know we've actually spoke about this before but we have really similar kind of journeys mm -hmm. whereas you know I was working from 14 in a cafe and stuff and yeah. doing the school plays and, yeah. and everything like that and I I think that makeup artists now, it's very different because the industry has blown up in a really different way. Mm. But 
I always say to people that want to be makeup artists, go and work on a counter still. Because like yeah. you've just said, there's nothing like every single day, different people coming mm. in with different skin problems, different mm. skin tones, different ages, different makeup looks, whatever. You're testing and trying your technique and learning every single day. So yeah. would you still say that to up oh, and coming artists? Totally. Yeah. And actually, whenever we have, you know, pop-ups or whatever, we're in real life, you yeah. know, I've been into the Glasgow space counter and I've had a bum in a seat and I've been putting my own products on. And see, for me, going back to those makeup counter days I will honestly cherish that and do that for as long as I can yeah. I love it it's so um, important but what you're what you said is so right you've got no idea who's going to come and see you so it's it's constant problem solving um and learning mm. and, and figuring it out with your customer I think that's also where I learned that um you just need to ask questions that's all you like all you have to do is ask questions to see exactly what that customer wants and needs um, you know, rather than try and be prescriptive with makeup, which I don't think works. Yeah. I think that there's too much feeling and personal, you know, choice and, and personal preferences that I don't think that you should walk into a counter and say, you know, I'm looking for a foundation and no one ask you a question about your skin tone or your skin type or how you want to look. You know, not not everything that a makeup artist would choose for you is what you would choose for yourself. And at so the end true. of the day, it's about you feeling your best. So that to me was always really important. And this makes complete sense. And we'll talk about Vive in a bit, but that makes complete sense to me knowing the brand as well and the evolution from that to Vive. But talking of evolution, I suppose that we have to talk about the start of the social media. So, yeah. I mean, you, you know, <laughs> you were one of the first, YouTube, okay? Yeah. How did YouTube begin? Do you know what? I actually, I can't believe that sometimes because I do, I almost look back because what a journey it was and what a time Um but I am so fulfilled doing what I'm doing now. And it's mm. it's a different graft for sure. Yeah. Um, but I I just loved it so much. I was so buzzing to be in this industry that I loved so much. I felt like I was getting better. And then I remember I would get up really early, do a full face of makeup, take a picture, post a selfie on Instagram. This <laughs> was back in the day where Instagram had no stories, no reels, no yeah. video. Yeah. You no carousels, you would post <laughs> one picture. It was yeah. Very bloody easy. <laughs> Have you still got all those pictures? Like sometimes I go back right to my Instagram. I'm like, whoa, did I really post that blurry picture of my uh, yeah, eye? <laughs> yeah, we did. And it, and it, and it killed it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, no, I, I, there's, there's old pictures there for sure. But I would get up really early, do my makeup, post a picture, go and work all day. At that time, I was working between a makeup counter, Lush, the bath bomb shop, mm -hmm. and a bar. So I would be juggling these jobs. I would be doing my makeup, post it on social. And then... I did a Halloween look. I really loved my Halloween makeups and kind of special effects. Yeah. I was still at college at the time. And I got loads of comments asking if I could do a YouTube tutorial. And that freaked me out so much. I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> Self-preservation kicked in and I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not <laughs> opening myself up like that. Um, but it was one customer that came into Alamaska that sat across from me and said, you need to do YouTube because you are very different on Instagram and what you're like in real life. And it was because of like my posing and yeah. my makeup, you know, it was quite severe. It was a lot of makeup. Um, I very rarely would smile and things like that, which is the kind of antithesis of what I'm like in real life. So I was like, mm, right, okay. And I, I went home, I think I've literally filmed it that night. I sat down and I'm painfully shy, I'm terrified. But because of just that pair, it was like that sweet spot, that timing was perfect. My community that I started building on socials was so kind and so excited about beauty that I think it really naturally just kind of happened at the same time. So what I would do instead of just getting up early and posting pictures of makeup, I would get home at the end of my working shift and take it all off and then film a YouTube video. Um, some of them are filmed in my like cupboard because <laughs> you know <laughs> I was I was living with my parents at the time and yeah. I had to you know be quiet. So, um. I would just play around and um, I just loved it so much. So I would just fill my days with it. Um, and I was still going out with Jack, my husband. Yeah. I was going out with, my, with Jack back then. And he he was supportive, but he was also like, what is going on? <laughs> what was Jack doing at the time? Bricklayer. So oh, he, yeah, yes. So he was a bricklayer and he would go and work all day and then come. Like I don't think we lived together at that point. I think it happened really quickly. We moved in together. We got Drogba, our first dog. Yeah. Um, and then I left being freelance. So that's another part of my journey. I was freelance for a year while juggling the social media. And that's when things were just growing quite quickly for me. Yeah. Then I realized that there was really something in it. And I was going to miss a trip. I got invited on my first ever brand trip 
remember I got this email through and I, came, I, I thought it was spam. I was like, no way, is that real? <laughs> but I wasn't going to be able to go because I had clients booked in and I was going to honour the clients. And mm-hmm. then it was my colleague that was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. So I reached out to these clients and I asked them if it was all right. And they were like, we've been wondering why you're still here. Oh. So I felt really supported by honestly, like all the people that I'd worked with, but you know, Debrams, I would go in there years after and everyone was always so like excited and kind to me. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I literally fell into this digital creation, this influencer career that, la- that w- it was about six years I think it was about four years of, of you know, solidly doing that before I realised I was like, I actually can have the dream of having my own brand. That's something that I've wanted since I worked at Elamaska. I used to look around and be like, I, I think I could do this. And, and I would look at these products and I'd be like, I, I think I could do this. Is that when it started? Is that do- Because I just think it's terrifying to even consider having your own brand because I feel like it is such a, a dream, particularly as... A makeup artist, you know, we see so many different products. So the mm. fact that you were like, do you know what? I'm going to do this. How did you do it? Like, how, um, where did you start? Because I think like, so the community side of stuff is so important. Mm. That goes through Vive. That is you through and through. We've, you know, just in this past beginning bit, we've spoken about your community, how important it is. To transfer that to a brand, it's not just about making the products mm. and hoping for the best. Where did Vive start? So it was that, what I said about uh, listening to people and yeah. asking questions. So I, yeah. um, I've i got a pretty good memory as well uh, when it comes to certain things, certain th- other things. No, I can't remember what I was doing this morning, but I can, <laughs> I can remember uh, like pivotal conversations that really stick with me. So over over the years and actually getting to work with all these brands that I love so much mm-hmm. and getting a little kind of peek behind the curtain, not at their formulas, but almost at their brand identity. Yes. Um, and seeing, you know, and there's so many brands that I love and celebrate and, and I think are brilliant. But for me, I found it quite clear where I, exactly where I wanted to go with it. And I think, I was thinking about this on the plane down this morning. I think for me, it's all about balance. It's balancing professional products that makeup artists all love with products that are easy to use mm. for people that are not, you know, makeup artists. You know, they're, yeah. they're makeup novices maybe, but but they, but they want to use it and they don't want to be scared not of it. Not intimidating. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's a combination of the products looking really luxury and really high end, but they're still got a kind of great price point that anyone yeah. can treat themselves to. It's the aesthetic of the brand feeling quite ap- unapologetically cool, but at the same time, we're real people yeah. that can have normal conversations and we've got real lives and we're not scared to show that. And then I think what I was thinking about this morning is that we are... You know, the community is so kind, but we also stand up for ourselves. Yeah. We're also quite sure of ourselves and we're unapologetic about that as well. And that is what I find to be really empowering. Um, that makes me really excited. So see the kind of balance of all of that. And it's also the welcoming of the customers that want to, the people that want to have something to do with Vive are absolutely invited to do so. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not pigeonholed into one beauty standard. And I really feel like we do show that. I think there's always more to do. Um, for inclusivity across every facet of a person, you know. Yeah. Um, and what's what's so amazing, and honestly, kind of sad, but it, but it is amazing when you do hero those different groups of people. They are so appreciative. Yeah. And they can't believe it, and and they feel like they're really part of the brand, and that should. The reason I find it sad is because it's like, oh my god, you've not felt like you've belonged like this before, but. Um, it should be the, it should be the standard for of sure. Course. But you know what? It's these it's it's been going on so long. But also, I think that you should be so proud of that because actually, you know, we we both worked with loads of different brands. You've worked with loads of brands over the years, and like you say, incredible, incredible brands. What you have taken from there is learnings, like you say, along this whole blooming journey, and you've now created a brand that is inclusive and. It is so complicated in the beauty industry because it's frustrating because it should never, like we said, Mm. be like this. But what you've done from day one of starting a brand is made sure that that is the case with no compromise. And I think that that's also so important because it showcases exactly who you are as a person as well as the brand. But that makes it so open. Vivi is so open to everyone and I really can't think of many other brands that have managed to do that. So I hope you realise that how important that is, but also pretty rare. 
Oh, thanks, Lisa. I think that there's so much more work to be done. And honestly, a lot of it comes along with budgets and things like that. Yeah, of there's, course. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's limitations to, to certain things when it comes to, you know, your order numbers or your your campaigns and how big they can be. But mm. it's something that is the, uh, the absolute forefront of our mind. Me and the team talk about it all the time. It's it's absolutely customer first. We ask ourselves all the time if this is right. If this is right for the customer, then it's right. Or if it's wrong for the customer, then it's wrong. So we'll change plans and things like that. So that's that's definitely our kind of like North Star. Yes, if, if that makes sense. And you're talking about the brand because it's your brand, but mm -hmm. a lot of people, um, brand founders, don't stick with the brand or aren't as heavily involved as you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's been so important to you from the beginning, right? Yeah. You are so heavily involved in this. You're balancing now <laughs> being still a pretty new mum, your actual <laughs> other job, and then having this brand and everything else in between. Yeah. How important is it for you to be this heavily involved? Oh my God, it's everything. Yeah. It's everything. I can't imagine it another way. I'm, am I a control freak maybe? <laughs> I feel I feel like naturally you just will be about something that you care about You're not a Virgo, a are you? No, no. I'm a cancer. Those yeah. I care very deeply. Yeah. I am a Virgo man. Yeah, because I'm Virgo and I'm a control freak as well. So. We can't help it. I like nice things and I like them to be just so and I like things to feel to feel as perfect as they can be. Um mm -hmm. But I, it's so important for me to be everything in Vive. Um, I really, I do pride myself on the, the whole juggling thing. I think that the secret is that there is no art to it. Whatever mm. you need to be that day is what you need to be that day. So when I'm working, you know, I'm down here for the day, I, I'm, I'm really conscious of not feeling guilty about, you know, not being able to be the other Jamie's that I need to be that yeah. day. I'll just try and be my best one. Be kind to yourself. Just, just now, yeah. yeah. And, um, I think the it's my schedule and things like that is quite funny, I suppose. And there's you know there's definitely some weeks that feel a bit <laughs> of a lot, but I think that's just the nature of being a brand founder and caring a lot. Yeah, you know if you yeah. didn't care as much, you probably wouldn't do as much. You probably wouldn't exactly. Straight, but but it's but I I've really managed to trick myself and see like the stress and the nervousness. I have managed to like trick my brain into just thinking that I'm excited all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. actually, it's much easier. <laughs> it's not stress. It's just happiness and excitement. I'm just, I'm just buzzing <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Definitely not all the black coffee either. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> so what was the one product that really shot Vive into the limelight that you were like, oh my uh, God, this is happening. It's, I think Skin Nova. Yeah. Got, it's, it's, everyone it. expects this answer from me all the time now, but this, um, and again, I usually this, there's a bit of a method to the madness here see if I feel really nervous about a product it's usually one that's going to be unbe unbelievable for us so I felt really nervous um excited <laughs> yeah yeah excited buzzing 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 <laughs> um skin nova mascara concealer yeah these big players that I know have competition and you know great formulas out there already and they've all like over exceeded ex expectations um, I think modern mascara was sold out of space for the ages. We were time. constantly, constantly, you know, putting the stock back in, and yeah. it was just selling out. And that's your return customer. That's all your loyalty product. That you know. honestly, at least I will. I cannot tell you. I will never forget being in the Vive shop when we had it open. And a woman came in to me. I don't think she had a clue who I was, but she was like, I need my mascara. <laughs> and she had modern mascara in her hand yeah. and it was a, fin a finished one. And she was like, I need my mascara. And I was like, you can get your mascara. Yes. Let me get you your <laughs> mascara. And then I had to quickly go and ask uh, one of my team where the mascara is. <laughs> I actually didn't know where the stock was. But um, that to me is everything. And Skin Nova is something that I get messages from people all the time. It gets th these write-ups online and things and I just can't believe it. Um, and it's also, you know, it's a skincare hybrid. Yeah. We um we recently did claims testing on Skin Nova, right? And there's a lot of, you know, really potent serums from other brands that boast that they boost hydration and by like, you know, 160%. Mm -hmm. Our primer, our primer, which is a skincare makeup hybrid, so it definitely has great skincare in there, hydrates skin by 202%. Wow. So it's like, the, this is to me, makes me ill with excitement because I've <laughs> I am a bit of like a data geek and like, you know, the, the, the kind of science behind the product, um, getting these claims testing was really important, but this product works and these people, you know, these customers, these people that love it, they want to talk about it. And that makes me so proud, you know, having a product that people are having products that people want to talk about. Yeah. 
I mean, you know how much I love it. You love it. I love it. I've loved it since day one. I was like, hold on a minute. What is this? There's well, something magic about it. Yeah. It's just also the, I mean, I could talk about it all day, but it's it's the glow that it gives without being too glowy. Yeah. It's not greasy. It's yeah. not, it just gives you this beautiful, it's like you're just glowing from within. Yeah, it's so good. And it's, it's the a bit of magic. The, 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 the fact that it's for everyone, it's one product yeah. that is all skin tones, all ages, all skin textures, all skin t- types. Yeah. Um, it just works. It just works. And that, I think maybe another reason I'm really proud of that one is I had to work really hard on that formula. Um, it took a really long time to get it right. I had to really, you know, work with the lab and do a little bit of hand holding in certain areas of the product and the formula. Um, so it made me feel really proud. But how cool is that? Yeah, like just go, even just going in the lab, just in the lab, you know, but how cool is that? Like actually from, from being a makeup artist, holding all these products, not really knowing what the yeah. formulations are. You know what the brands have told yeah. you, but really that doesn't necessarily go in because you're not seeing the breakdown of the products yeah. in your hand. But you are now with your brand. You're yeah. going into these labs, you're seeing these formulations. It's the best. Add it's- a bit of that, take a bit of that away. It's it's so it's so amazing how much you learn not only from like a formula and NPD side of things but just the, the business as a whole. I've never learned so much in my entire life, and it's almost a bit like a drug. Like I just have like a pure th- a thirst for knowledge. <laughs> yeah. um, I was chatting with my the head of finance, Miller, and learn like you know all these things that I would have no clue. I've never been to university. Yeah. I, I dro- technically dropped out of high school, and to to have like this proper knowledge of the financial you know, background of this business makes me so excited. I mean, you've got a head of finance. I've got a head of finance. Do you know finance. what I mean? You've got a head of finance. <laughs> Look at you go. That I'm is... wearing a waistcoat. <laughs> yes, you are. She's got a briefcase over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about that moment when you got the call from Space NK and they said, Oh my God. Hey, we want to stock Vive. I mean, sorry, that is wild because in the UK, obviously, the UK and Scotland, Space NK is... Just huge. It's one of the best retailers. Yeah. And you going in there, tell me how that made you feel. It's, it's so, it happens. See, when things are going at such a pace, you almost don't have enough time to think about these things as and when they're happening. But when we got that call and, and you know, all everything was kind of lined up, I remember just feeling really, really excited. And I'm sure we were online first and then we rolled into doors. But it was, it was when we launched our Glasgow store. Because I remember going in there when I was 19 to buy something, anything. And I bought a lipstick, queen lipstick. And that lipstick I used down to the <laughs> butt. You know, I, f- yeah. I finished that nude lipstick, obviously. And when I walked in, I remember the day that the, you know, the gondola went in and, you know, the designer of the gondolas and things like that. It's something that we had been done for, like, for ages. We've been doing that for ages. But when I, w- when I walked into that store and I turned around and it was in the prime location, wow. big two meter gondola, I was literally like, this is absolutely bonkers. This is mental. I think that what being in space has done for us is our presence up and down the country mm-hmm. physically. Yes. So yeah. bricks and mortar and actually space, you know, the way that it's been done has always been so cool. It's always been the best brands. I remember, you know, like Diptyque, everyone talks about Diptyque yeah. in space because yeah. it, it's just great. You love Diptyque so I love much it. as well. Yeah, love. But there's something about space that makes me feel like, I don't know, it's like the mixture of comforted, but it's luxury. Yeah. And I just, I just feel... Um, it just makes me feel great and it's like a proper beauty shopping experience absolutely and also I think that the key is as well that even though you're going in it's premium their staff the the beauty experts are so incredible because you have to trust those people with your brands yeah, but, yeah. but you go in and train them yes, right so we've done it in head office but there's there's other kind of moments where we can go in and there's all the BAs Amazing. and stuff like that but I best believe any space in care I pass it leaves in there and I go in and I'm like hi guys how are you getting on <laughs> What's the best seller today? I need a, I need a concealer. <laughs> what would I recommend? Yeah, exactly. um, no, I love it. And I think, again, because I come from Counter, I remember what it's like to work in a in a store. And actually, what's really cool for those, the, the Space NK staff, are, are they're not, um, they're not, they're not brand loyal in the sense that they, they'll have their favourites, but yeah. they don't work for a brand. So you know that if they're talking about your brand, they like it. Yeah. They really like it. And that, to me, means a lot. So, um I know, it's so cool. It's so cool. So we've spoken about Skin Nova, but obviously a yeah. bestseller in Space NK as well is your I ones. Yeah. Which, okay, why do you think they're so popular? And then I'm going to say why they're so popular. Okay, okay. So our I ones, um, I've, I've been quite noisy about the, the formula with these because yeah. they are so long lasting, but they're so easy. So you can scribble them on, pat them out with your finger. 
you've got a smoky eye in literally seconds. Um, the formula is made in South Korea and see when it comes to skincare and products made for the eye area in particular for me, South Korea get it right every time because of, of honestly the beauty industry there and what they mm. are working with a lot, which is usually oilier monolids yeah. and skin like experts are their customer the, in, in Korea, their customer is a skincare expert. So the labs are of the caliber to deal with that. Yeah. Um, I love. I'm. I'm so nervous to see what you say. <laughs> I think. I think for me, it's tonal, tonally as well. So, yeah. um, Vive. When I, when you look at the brand, um, it is so wearable. We do have fun here and there, but for me, it's those staple, staple, staple colors. Yeah, that's. Ba- I mean, what I was gonna say was about the color. It's almost like yeah. your lipstick for your yeah. lids. Yeah. You because you've got. Oh, these, God, cool! Like, I like that. You can have that for free. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But but the blendability of them as well, um, yeah. because you, I think also doing the eyes for the everyday person can be quite stressful yeah. whereas this takes the stress out of it because you can like you say just scribble it on and blend it yeah. but you know sometimes when it does take a little bit longer than usual to do your eye makeup but these don't just stick there you can blend 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 yeah. you've got that time and then like you say to say put but for me it's the colors oh, the colors cool. because if you i know that if i'm just going to pick one up yeah it's going to look good. It's going to be fine. And the density so that you can use it as a liner, smudge yeah. it out or make it sheerer. Yeah. I just think it's a really smart product. It's a flexible formula. Yeah. Even though it's something that lasts a long time and the play time with the product, thank you very much for that. Yeah. that took me ages. Did it? Yeah, because, you know, see when it's too long, then actually the, the kind of staying power just isn't there. But yeah. when it's too fast... Our customers, you know, patchy. It's, it's not, it's not easy. Yeah. If it's too fast and it's not easy, maybe me and you could work with them. Yeah. But that's because we can do it quite quickly. I want people to be able to feel like they've got the time to almost learn as they go. So thank you very much for saying You're that. You're welcome. So we're not surprised that's a bestseller. <laughs> so going back to entrepreneurship. Yeah. You've always been so honest and open mm. with your fan base and the people that follow you. Do we call them a fan base? Not really the know. word, is it? I, I'm like, I really don't know. I your did. people, your people. The people. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, my people, my people. I like that. Can you share some mistakes and learnings that have come with being a founder yeah. for a brand? <laughs> and we're going to start another podcast now that's going to be yeah. two hours long. Yeah. Um, one of the best things that I realised and that I've totally made peace with um, is that mistakes are inevitable. Mm. And in the team, we, we do call them learnings, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, mistake we made a mistake <laughs> um I I really like as well I own up take account accountability yeah and I try and do that in front of the team as well so they know that you know if things go awry and we try something new and it and it doesn't go the way that we planned that that's all right yeah um because I've heard it before this is not my saying at all but if you're not making mistakes you're not trying enough new things yeah um which I can totally see I think it's really easy to stay in the kind of comfortable place it's so true um, and to bl- and you could easily like blame your team not that you would ever oh do that God, but no. you could you could you could and actually do you know what you know in in the last few years i've definitely met certain types of personalities that would do that yeah. you know um slightly defensive maybe um but to try and kind of lead by example i'm the first person to say when i've made a mistake and there have been some yeah there have been some uh for example you know there's, there's maybe certain side projects that didn't quite translate the way that I thought they would because mm-hmm. just because I love something doesn't mean that everyone loves something yeah. basically um quite a lot of the time they'll do all of it uh, and then the other the other thing uh that is so important to me is is about your your gut instinct yeah um so your gut is your second brain um which is why you need to look after your gut so yes much as definitely well. um but when you get that gut feeling when I get it I've ignored it. Like I can count on one hand how many times I've like pushed it down and been like, no, this is the right thing. Every time I've been right initially. Yeah. The gut, the gut feeling was right. And if I had, you know, voiced that or or put those things in action, those changes in action, um, it would have saved headaches. Is it the worst thing ever? No, it's a learning. But you've got to be brave as well, right, to brave. go with your gut because yeah. it's your gut. No one else can have that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so if you say, look, listen, I'm going with my gut. Some people are like, hold on a minute. We've got money invested in this. We've done it. We've whatever. But you're like, no. But it's, yeah, You it, have to. And it's the, it, like, for me, I think it's um, the, the, a bit of a compass for the brand. You know, the, its essence is probably me. You know, it is mm-hmm. me. So I think when my gut feeling kind of comes into play, and it's always a conversation, I'm not a foot down type of person at all. I'm very much a mum. Do you think that that's okay if I paint my walls that color? Like I, <laughs> and I, I like the kind of like surrounding kind of conversation and things like that. But when um, 
but when it comes down to that, yeah, it's really important to me. And just quickly talking about your mum and dad, yeah. was is is this where you've got your work like graft from? Would you say? Yeah, my mum. Yeah. My mum. I was I was raised by a woman who taught herself how to do everything mm. and worked so hard um, to kind of change the scope of what our life would be like, mm. and it worked. It completely. She's just the most amazing woman. One of the main ways as well, and I suppose this is kind of cool because it's kind of slightly backwards when it comes to yeah. gender norms. Um, so my, I grew up in a renovation, but, you know, when it came to finances and stuff like that, we didn't have the money to just pay people to do it. So my mom taught herself how to do it. Yeah. So my mom taught herself how to build walls <laughs> and repoint uh, outside of a house. And, you know, she was always, she, she like demolished most of her house by herself with a sledgehammer. Oh my so God. I would come home from school and she would be completely covered <laughs> in dust and... Um, but, you know, I, I was raised by by that kind of woman. So I have never felt like anything was out of reach, but I had to work to get there. Yeah. I wasn't under the delusion that things would be handed to me. Um, and they haven't been, but it, but it did give me this sense of like, almost like, it's not it's not imposter syndrome. It's like the opposite of that. I was like, no, I can do that if I want mm -hmm. to do that. I just yeah. need to really work really, really hard. Yeah. Um, and that has just been the most important thing, I think. And that now being a mum yourself, yeah, like that which is crazy, isn't it? Is it wild? Oh, it's God, like it mad. Literally the best thing I've ever yeah. done. I've always yeah. wanted. I've always wanted um, kids, and I always kind of wanted a daughter as well, which you're not really <laughs> meant to say. But see, when I found out I was pregnant with Romeo, I knew it was a girl straight away. Yeah, and and she is, and it's the most crazy journey ever. Um, but she is just the most incredible wee baby. She's so great. She's so cute. She's and, and it's something though you're right. It's like the way that my mum raised me yeah. and things. There are so many of those things that I want to, you know, raise Romy in the same way. I just want her to feel like she can do. The only thing, actually, no, let's just retract. The only <laughs> thing that set me up for a, not slight failure, but um, I was told I was so great all my life. And I could do anything if I worked hard and that I was kind. And that, and then I got to high school and it, w it was not kind and nice. <laughs> See, so I walked, into this? This, I walked into this building thinking, I am so great. And then I was like, probably a little bit humbled, but also not in the way that you'd think. I was at the bottom rung. Did and you I go was, home and you're like, mum? I, like, I was like, mum, people do not think I'm great. <laughs> and she was like, you are. And I was like, I don't think that they do. Um, <laughs> So I was I was I was uh, quiet. I was quiet in school. That's the only thing um, that was a crash to reality for me. But again, that even that taught me. But I bet with Romeo, like you're the best. <laughs> I'm actually I'm going to be like you're the best, but people are mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they are horrible. No, but, I, I, I think it's I think it's a good thing. I mean, she's obviously the highlight of your life, mm. but a highlight of your career. Yeah. I, I mean, there's got to be so many. I mean, obviously, a big high is being put on the Forbes under thirty. <laughs> list. I'm sorry, <laughs> Kylie Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy isn't it yeah that was a that was a proper blue sky goal of mine and I felt and this is actually again another lesson I felt embarrassed talking to my team about this because I felt like it was so out of reach and I was like but it's something that I have wanted ever since I found out what that was which was way before I started building Vive I was like I would so love to be on that list um and uh, yeah it was it was it was so funny the day because I just got an email I got an email saying congrats and I was like, is this spam? <laughs> and obviously the loads of work got put in before that. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. It's a real process. It's not something that you're just like emailed out the blue. Like, you know, we knew that we'd be hearing back, but I didn't have, I didn't have a huge amount of hope. I don't know why, but I just, I was just like, oh, maybe because I wanted it so much. Mm. And I was like, mm, trying to, again, self-preservation a wee bit. Um, Nuts. So that happy. It's like crazy. I mean, the thing is though, I think that obviously the self-preservation side of stuff yeah. is clear, but you also have confidence in yourself. And I think that's really key having that balance too, because if you don't believe in yourself, no one will. It's true. That's, you know, that's true. A, a fact. And you've got to where you are now because you've believed in yourself, but also it's not even believing in yourself. It's believing in your vision, I think. <laughs> Um, because ultimately, people can say no to you all the time. And mm. for some people, that might just stop them in their tracks and be like, well, I've been told no, that's it. Yeah. Well, you know. But for you, you've probably been told no loads of times, but you've said, you know what, this actually is something I am going to achieve. And you're achieving it. I mean, I know if I was to say you've achieved it, well, actually, no, 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 you are in this achieving process. Because it is a process. It's a process. I like to think as well that 
Viv, it does actually feel like the start still. I feel like there's so far to go. Oh, come on, tell us something. What's no, coming? What's I just going? feel like there's so far to go. <laughs> I feel like um, the, the in the last year, I would but I would say honestly, the last like four or five months, things have kind of felt like they've had a shift, and we're we're kind of on our trajectory to where we want to be, mm. which is it makes me sick excited. Yeah, I mean it's so exciting because. I'm ex- I expect, I mean, you launched during the pandemic, yeah. right? Which is, <laughs> did that even happen? I know, I know. <laughs> I always think like, like Romy, like her age, kids are going to be taught that in history books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can be like, do you know that thing you've just been taught that we survived? I launched Beef during Meant, that time. It's nuts, isn't it? <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> um, but actually probably amazing because people were so invested in beauty then as well um, yeah. and loved it. But to go from that to now, I'm sure there's a lot of learnings back then that, you've educated yourself as you say you're constantly learning mistakes were made but look now three four years later Mm. you are just at the beginning still and that is so exciting because I love the brand so much as do I would say pretty much everyone I know in the beauty industry I think that's really exciting too to have the support from people that don't just love you but genuinely love the brand people discovering you for the first time because of Vive that's my favorite thing not knowing it's even your brand sometimes, Favorite right? I am um, when, whenever I'm in, you know, store at, at a counter or or in the, in the pop up. When people don't know me, but they're in a shop, it's my favorite thing. Yeah, ever. I can imagine. I You're like watching it. them. Yeah. You're watching them. But, you know, even though it is a few years in, because it is the beginning. Mm. I mean, can you tell us anything that is coming? Oh, just a little hint. Just a little, you know. Uh, do you know what? There's actually something that's coming. It's a product that we get asked for all the time. Um, it's in complex it's complexion yeah. and that for me makes me sick excited the same nerves excitement that <laughs> I felt about concealer and skin nova um, and the testing that this has gone through is just unbelievable um, and, and the feedback that we've got every single we we, ca- we did a casting for models every single one of them said leave this on my skin like I cannot wait so biggest compliment that's the, fir- that's the first time that I've talked about it in a public forum there's something coming I think as well people can feel it's obvious I think you know building out the the catalogue for me was really important because mm-hmm. I want people to be able to enjoy our offering in every category of makeup yeah um but I really feel like we're getting there and those products that I launched three years ago I still swear by mm-hmm. I still love them so much so I think making sure the quality is just the exact same, if not better, is like always trying to improve. No compromise. No, no. Um, and again, this has been pushed back. You know, this is if it's not perfect, then it's not coming. Yeah. You know, and I feel I feel so fine about that now. Whereas I used to be like, oh, I'm worried about, you know, annoying suppliers or the team or yeah. And now I'm, I'm just a slightly bit, slight bit more stubborn about it, but in my lovely way that I am I yeah, you're like <laughs> it's gonna be worth and it in the end it's, it, but it's so worth it and time and time again that's been proven so yeah me you know the team the team is unbelievable and we work so closely together and it's a real shared experience um you know the 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 kind of hierarchy that can come in a company it really I don't feel it in Viva at all mm-hmm. I feel like we all have really open conversations it's a family right it's it's great you know it feels it few people just care so much and mm. actually I had a meeting with with um, one of my team that works in finance that I don't get to talk to a whole lot, but something she said really stuck with me and it made me feel so proud and it's the trust that we all have in each other um, that makes you know work hard when things need done and when things are feeling a little bit slammed, but the trust that you have um, and that freedom as well you know, say you're working from home three days a week, you're not mm-hmm. going to have someone breathing down your neck, but we're all working really hard to get the job done. Yeah. So see that that balance for me is so important and hearing that from someone, you know, I don't get to spend a lot of time with, hearing that kind of said back to me was brilliant just for the culture and things like that. You know, that's part of the business that's, you know, we talk about all the time. The people are what make a yeah. business. You know, you can make great product, but without all the people in the right, um, in the right roles, it'll never reach the customer the way that we want it to. Yeah, but also you have to remember that that culture comes from you as well. So the fact that that they're trusting you, they're they're passionate about the brand, they want it to do well, is because that comes from you. Um, Because I think that like, it's very easy for founders to step back. We mentioned that earlier and you're so fully involved in it and I don't see that changing. Mm. And that <laughs> is really exciting, not only for you, but for us as well. Okay. So on that note, Jane, I've got one last question. Okay. One last question. So let's say 
someone has never tried Vive oh, okay. before. Never tried Vive. And they go into their Space NK store and they say, right, I'm going to get one Vive product. What is it going to be? Oh, I'm like, I know you're going to say Skin Nova, but I'm like, what if you say it can't be Skin okay, Nova? Okay. Skin Nova, Skin Nova is a given. Um, I would, I would have said Skin Nova as well. Um, it's hot. what about like what about lip juice? <laughs> I just love lip juice. Lip juice. I think modern mascara for me yes, as well. Yeah. It's just um, it's your everyday mascara. Oh, it's isn't everyday it? mascara, and do you know what? See, because it's so easy to take off. Yeah, it's got castor seed oil. It's nourishing for your lashes. It really does. It really does help with the health of your lashes. Mm-hmm. But because of all those things, people are finding that their lash health is better, which makes their lashes feel and look longer. Which yeah. Is really- also, can I just say that I could see in Jamie's mind, like the products going through her mind, going like, okay, which one shall I say? Which one shall I say? It's but so also, hard. It, it's so hard. And I know that Space NK, it's huge for us in Space NK is Sunset Blush Bam. Oh, yeah. That is a Space NK customer's ride or die. They love it. There you go. Good luck picking up one product, guys. But then I would also say concealer because it's every day. <laughs> like, no, this is when it's an issue. It's an issue. Um, I feel... I think that's my terrible answer <laughs> you, for you. you. You're basically changing your whole makeup bag. Oh, Jamie, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. No, and thank you. For you listening, I'm sure it's been really inspiring as well. I feel like the key points are to always go with your gut. Yeah. Always go with your gut. Always, always just do what you think is right for you. Don't listen to people when they say no. Just go for it. Yeah. And who knows what you can create. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's great. Thanks, Thanks Jamie. Sum up, Lisa. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Bye. guys.